Hi everyone, thanks for joining me today. I'm Lori Hale. I received today's word from the Lord back on March 15th, several weeks before President Trump released his recent statements on abortion and his decision to leave it up to the states. As I was thinking over Trump's remarks, the Lord interrupted my thoughts and brought back to mind something I had heard years prior, which is, that God is always previous. Meaning because he knows the end from the beginning, as it says in Isaiah 46, 10, he has already seen the entire scope of the abortion battlefield. And therefore he knows in advance the perfect strategy for defeating the enemy. We as believers only need to do one thing, partner with his plan and contend from that position. I then received a vision as the Lord took me to an abortion clinic where I saw a small group of protesters standing on the sidewalk outside the clinic holding up signs opposing abortion. And I heard this. The axe must be laid to the root. The axe meaning our spiritual warfare. And not simply aimed at the branches, for unless the origins of this tree are cut out of the soil, this tree meaning legalized abortion, then it shall continue to sprout new limbs, those that produce nothing but poisonous fruit, that pernicious kind which leads to death when ingested. I was then taken to the spiritual battlefield over abortion. I saw the nation's capital, and in front of it stood a solid black wall. As I looked closer, I could see it wasn't an actual wall, but a thick line of demonic forces. Suddenly a fracture appeared in the line which caused the enemy's forces to divide into smaller factions. And then a large portion of those factions fled to other states, joining the pockets of resistance already established in those more abortion-friendly areas. The Lord showed me that the fracture was the moment Roe was overturned and what it looked like in the spiritual sense and how in that instance, the spiritual battlefield over abortion had shifted. And then I heard this. Then there must be the continued bearing down of intercession upon each state's meeting house throughout this nation where abortion has been permitted, even upon those states claiming to be more pro-life and yet have enacted legislation that keeps abortion a viable option as long as a fetal heartbeat has not been detected. So though the closing of an abortion clinic here and there should be counted as a win, still the full victory has yet to be achieved, which is the complete eradication of legalized abortion from America's shores. However, what must be understood is that because the overall populace in several states have allowed for the practice of legalized abortion, even if a clinic is shut down in a particular city or town, another will simply spring up at a different location. For the abortionist and the darkness with which he or she has partnered still has the legal right to occupy that ground in both the temporal and spiritual realm. For when man gives his assent to evil, he opens the door for the demonic to enter and lay claim to territory that it does not rightly own and thus remain until it is actually driven out. So though there are some who have long been laboring in this field and who have dedicated their lives to the pro-life cause, much of their effort has been in vain as their vigils outside the abortion clinics have not broken the enemy's hold upon their state, as is evidenced by the continuing presence of death mills within their borders. The Lord then highlighted the PRC where I had previously worked. This particular pregnancy center was unique in that our office was adjacent to an abortion clinic, sharing an interior wall that separated our suites. Needless to say, there was a lot of spiritual warfare happening on our side of that wall. When I showed up to work one day, I saw a moving van in the parking lot. As I headed towards our office, I saw that the abortion clinic was closing their doors and moving out. Was this a win? Yes. But 
are there still abortions happening in my state? Sadly, yes, as I live in California. And I share that to give a real life example of the point the Lord was wanting to make. And that being, though it seemed at the time like a giant win for us, it had little to no impact on the larger battle over abortion in California, as the seat of the enemy's authority was unaffected. Then the Lord changed his tense, and instead of speaking in a third-person point of view, he shifted to second person and began to speak directly to us. This is what I heard. Listen then, all you who hail from my kingdom. You are not to give the enemy any quarter, and thereby must no longer tolerate his presence in this, the land of your inheritance. For surely has he been shown too much leniency in the past. Now is the hour of his undoing, and thus have I sounded the call to arms. For my soldiers must assemble and drive out this despot and his legions from the citadels they have erected. Then do I say, with the hearts of warriors, charge into battle, confident that the victory is already yours. Strike fast and strike hard, thus let unrelenting be your stance, where with a fixed determination you bombard in every state those high seats of power that house altars built to honor that dark King Moloch. For it is within the ground of these meeting houses, where state legislation is passed, that his authority is rooted. And so to see his influence broken over those states where he has been enshrined, the capital in each of these regions must be heavily assaulted with your warfare. For the warfare of the elect is still effective for toppling over any and every demonic stronghold. Of it, though the river of innocent blood is still found flowing throughout this nation, for daily do Moloch's priests sacrifice human lives upon his altars, those of which have yet to be born. Yet sparse are the number of my soldiers who have come to their defense, for most have simply ignored my repeated calls to take up arms, as these soldiers have no interest at all in joining the fight to save human life. Yet do I say, refuse me not, lest your refusal to heed my command to enter this battle be counted as an act of direct disobedience, where like the children of Israel, you too neglect my orders to fully drive the enemy out of your land. I tell you now that just as it was with that rebellious lot who worship foreign gods, so shall it be again. For if this darkness is allowed to persist, the coming generations of the church shall not be so inclined to count abortion as evil, as the efforts of the enemy to normalize that vile practice shall have succeeded. Thus shall abortion be added to the list of acceptable sins that are not only tolerated but embraced by the church, though even now can this attitude be found within some believers. Then to you who line my ranks, let it be plainly understood that the stakes could not be higher. For the outcome of this current battle over abortion shall impact the course and destiny of this nation. Therefore, do not brush aside my words, thinking this fight does not concern you. For all who line my ranks have been conscripted to join this cause, and as such, can you no longer claim indifference on this issue? For indeed have I made clear my position, leaving no room for ambiguity. And thus should the lines of my soldiers fall in accordingly. Hear me then, it is time to put a stop once and for all to the atrocities caused by abortion. Thus should the cruelty being done to the pre-born within the borders of America no longer be tolerated by anyone, especially by the church. For you who are called the elect should already be found holding to my higher perspective on the matter of abortion. However, to make certain, none can say they were mistaken about my position. Let me reiterate again where I stand on the practice of abortion. In my sight, 
it is abhorrent and therefore is without justification for any reason, period. To the elect in America, then, do I say, do not think that there exists any room to negotiate on this matter of abortion, for firm is the ground I am standing upon regarding the genocide of the preborn. And since my judgment remains sound and is not prone to error as with man, then it is you who needs to align with my position and not the other way around. Listen up then, you sons of the Most High God. Hear me, you daughters of Zion. It is time to take decisive action and deliver another crippling blow to the enemy's plans. For the opportunity to significantly hinder his advance lies just before you. Then grab hold of your sword and lay siege to his shrines until his altars are demolished. Again, give that dark king Moloch no quarter, for you must be unmerciful in your assault against him. Lay the axe to the root then and strike again and again until this evil of abortion is completely vanquished from your state and fully driven out of your nation. Thanks again for joining me today.